All right, just restarted my machine so we don't run into any issues later. Uh, so let's, uh, yeah, let's get things, get things going again. Load up Unity. Ooh, sleepy. Those of you that are just tuning in for the first time ever, maybe via the VODs, um, welcome. Be sure to check out all of the different VODs that we've got on YouTube. There's a bunch, um, several people on the team stream pretty regularly, and we've been doing it for a while. So check it out. If you like it, please subscribe. Notice that our subscriber count on YouTube, which costs you nothing, um, is is lower than our mailing list and our follower accounts on Twitch and our total number of Discord people. So some of you, some of you folks, and I can see it when you comment. I can see it when you stay, whatever it is that you stay in the comments. I don't, I don't, I, I see a lot of comments without a little subscriber badge next to it. So do the right thing, people. Do the right thing. As Spike Lee would say. Good morning. It is a wonderful Tuesday afternoon. 2.04 p.m. in sunny Bremen, Germany. Hello, BDC Retro. Hello, Algo. I'm going to drink my bucket of coffee while it's still warm. Coming in just a minute or two late because I had to, I had to update my, all my Streamlabs crap. Gonna make some coffee. All right, I'll go. See you in a, see you in a few. Uh, what we got here? Just... Big Al, what's going on? What's up, White Chapel? Hey, Pattis. Pattis, I took a couple of screens of uh, Night Harbor stuff and threw it in the update. And uh, both your work and Simon's work. And then I used a couple of the images that you took of the uh, Shade of Dunes facade update. Put it in there as well. Those of you that don't know, Update 25 is out. It is two months worth of work, so it is a lot. We are currently listening in the background to the ambient, 22 minute ambient track that Robert created. Hey, Dargus. Hey, Belfaster. Hey, Aaron. Hey, John. Yeah, no worries, Pattis. It's I like I like going in and taking pictures of that stuff for the most part as well. I I enjoy doing it. It just takes a few minutes. Mmm, Unity is just low to reawaken today. Hey Keith. Thank you very much for uh for uploading the VODs, Keith. I I hope you realize that that is appreciated. Ooh, I'm sleepy. Ooh, man. It just, it just came to you that the guitar, guitar sound on this kind of sounds like the beginning of that John Bon Jovi song, Wanted Dead or Alive. I don't, what is that song called? I think it's called Wanted Dead or Alive, right? Is it not...
Keith, I set I set that video to fire off tomorrow. Oh yeah, that right part that part right here. That just happened. I heard it. Fell faster, that's uh if it just kinda kept going. Big Al said, I'm going to gather some materials and a uh, resume to apply to your environment art position. Where can I throw stuff at you guys to discuss? Um, I'll tell you what, hit me up in DMs. We've, we've filled the environment slot that we had posted, but it never hurts to have, uh, have people's interests and stuff cataloged and, and waiting to see. Well, no, don't say shit. Don't say shit. Like I said, it never hurts to it never hurts to see what's up and All right, so um yesterday over the weekend I spent a little bit of time moving some items and stuff around Pattis. I'm thinking I didn't break anything. I followed your rules, I deleted nothing. You delete nothing, Lebowski. Um, so I deleted nothing, but I, I duplicated many trees and shrubs and tents and shit, um, to kind of get these two set up. And then I was going to play around with some other objects, but it looks like they've got to be break broken out of the main mesh. So like when I clicked on <laughs> shrubbery, um, when I clicked on like these guys, they're all one unit. T -t -t stone unit. <clears throat> so, what about these guys over here? Could I just steal one of these? Oh, hell no. All right. And that also now lets me know I'm not going to screw with those ruins. So anyways, I was going to, I was going to play with some of these pillars and make some nice big pillars along the shoreline reminiscent of some other shoreline. Um, but they are all, they are all together. Um, and then I think the only other thing I would need from you, Pattis, at some point is if I'm able to edit these two base meshes, what, one of the only other things I wanted to do was come in here and maybe try to re-sculpt this little road kind of area. Um... But it's not super important, right? Because it just kind of like hits a wall here now. But yeah, it's just going to kind of like maybe, maybe bring it around and hey, Bombo, good morning. What's up, Stoic Outrider? And then merge this up together and then that would be kind of that. Fecal finger painting. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh I'm gonna spill the beans for you. That's never gonna happen. Um and then later on, I mean what I did was I just worked with the mesh that is in here. There's a lot of like mesh sort of improvements that we wanna do where to make this stuff uh more traversable, etc. But for now at least it's playable. <clears throat> Octo Wisp asked, "Morning. Uh, so, a question: What comes first, the story slash stories in the world, or the world? Does the story develop as the world is being built?" Um, good morning, Demon Injected. To answer your question, Octo Wisp, uh, we started with building just like base world building, like understanding. Getting a understanding of the world, um, its history, the cultures and races and creatures and things like, uh, naturally we, we didn't answer all of that. We just kind of got a, enough of a foundation to start working from. Um, and then from there that helps us, it helped us develop, uh, initial understanding of locations. Um, and then from there we focused on proof of concept specific content which is really like this region and night harbor um and so then we've been drilling down specifically into those 
those factions um, and individuals. And then for something like uh, the quests, what we've done is taken the factional write-ups that details the factions and different individuals and their relationships to other factions and other individuals potentially use that to start generating some quests as we're generating quests we think of maybe new people or new things that um we'd want in the game uh, adjustments to environments and then we go from there um make adjustments or something like this area these two areas here it's actually an interesting example of for now, we're not going to do a lot of work to redo this this zone. The zone's here. It functions well enough as is, but in the future, we're going to redo it. Um, we've got ideas for how to expand it and change some areas and yada, yada, yada. And so in the meantime, before we make major revisions to the art, uh, just go through a lot of the lore that's been around. Um, and looked at what do we have okay well we've got these two oases that weren't really being used for you know we had some crocs in here and stuff like that like baby crocs and stuff as we've made night harbor the main city have its own newbie yard within the zone zone lines here whereas uh that used to be the job that part of shaded dunes was doing back when night harbor and shaded dunes were all one zone um like last year um that's allowed for us to now uh, reimagine the level ranges and some of the NPCs that we're going to have in different spots here, especially in this front area. So there used to be a tiny little like three tent camp that was the Ashira refugee camp when the, we originally set things up. What I've done instead is because there's such a big focus and there's potentially content for you to unlock through faction things like that with them, just taking one of these oases that was just kind of being used for not much before and turned um, that into a bandit camp, which is, you know, a bigger sort of uh, combat area. Um, you know, wanted to be able to support multiple camps, multiple groups over here. And then we take this other one where it's like, all right, this was kind of the mid camp. I think we we're going to do kind of a, maybe a bandity kind of theme with them originally. Um, we moved them over here, that opens this up, and then we use this as the Ashira refugee area. And so the ambushers and stuff that we're running around here, we now have in these uh, paths that, while it's really hard to traverse over these crazy dunes that I made, you know, a year and a half ago, um, that makes it so you kind of got to go through these paths in order to get here, or maybe find another area around, yada, yada, yada. So there you go. Mikes and Bose says, hi all, uh, robot, very impressed with the latest update info on the website. Uh, just head it out. So we'll catch up on YouTube. All right. You have a good day. Um, and, uh, I hope you for a short man, you have long sentences. Are you talking to me, Bumpo? I am not sure. Uh, so anyways, Octowisp, you're welcome. That's, I mean, what what I found is it's a very back and forth process. And it's also with the understanding that in, anything you build early on in a development process, um, especially for something like an MMO, you're going to want to come back and revise and revise and revise as new tools come online, as new understanding, um, unless you're going to sit down and write the entire story of the game, like have a full understanding of all the locations and faces and you know like uh factions and intrigue if you don't have all of that just built in advance then it's going to be a back and forth process as you go and then anything that's your first area is going to be your worst area first is always worst because it's it's before you get um all of your tools it's before you get all of your systems it's before you get all your understanding how to best utilize tools and systems um before you've pieced together even more lore, all of that shit. So, layers like onions. Yes, our world is a is a big old onion. Um, the let me know if the if if the music is too loud. I've just turned it down on my end, but I know that the monitor here doesn't really show me an accurate depiction of how the music sounding on your end.
Demetrius, thank you. Welcome. Stoic. Yeah, it's um, it's a rad mug because it's big. Uh, problem is the heat dissipates out of it so quickly. So we gotta we gotta change this mug at some point. Toot Master eighteen. I don't, I don't know how I feel about that name. It makes me think of my mom when she says, like, she won't say fart. She says toot. Um. Hey, lovely Pifflet. Good to see you. It's been a little while. Is that the mug or just the mug? It's the mug. This is my main mug. Ah. <sighs> So, Tootmaster asks, is there going to be equipment requirements? I liked how original EQ allowed players to have no requirement. Horizontal gear system, you slowly just fill in all your slots. Yeah, it's going to feel a bit, it's, it's going to feel like that. Music is at 100% voices like 80 for reference. Now you've confused me, Nicodemus. Does that need, mean I need to turn music down? My voice isn't going to go up any further. Alright. I'll keep an eye on it. I'll turn it down a little bit. All right, and so then um, for those of you that are just kind of curious about the process, I don't know, I th thought on a previous stream I showed this. So basically because this isn't the real Night Harbor, it's a facade that um, Harrison put in, Pattis put in, um, which looks really great so that the zone flow, like when you're in here, it looks natural. Um, looks more than natural now, it looks super natural. It looks fantastic. Um, so, what um, we did, I, we might have started this the other day, is came in using our handy dandy zone paddle, enabled all of the spawn data in here. Oh, if, yeah, Pipley, you haven't you haven't been here for a while, so just wait until I hit play. It's gonna look very beautiful. All right, so we've got this here, um, and so I've just been kind of making very very minor adjustments. Um, I was talking to Nick a little bit about uh, some population adjustments last night. Like this volume here is newbie stuff from back when it was part of the newbie yard. And what it uh, should be is instead like a transition because our newbie content now in Night Harbor goes up to like there's some level four and five mobs in there. Some killers roaming around and some nasty creepers and so we'll expand some of that over into here as uh luna and i continue to uh add starter content newbie quests and stuff and this yard starts to get maybe a little packed out feeling then we'll also be making sure that um you know for me to flow seems to make sense that the the first quest will have you be in here and the second quest will probably either send you into shade of dunes or into Wormsbane or into some other place like that. And so that way we're encouraging you to sort of go out and explore more. But yeah, so as I've been updating um, structures and things, I've just been moving the existing spawns to where they need to be. You can kind of see them around here. Like these are ambushers. Um, they're currently on a wander within a sphere, that one. This is a wander within a sphere. Uh, yeah, so um, on a couple of these, I may actually have some that are just patrolling. Oh, my dog. What's up, Golden Gloves? Thank you for 12 months. Um, yeah, so. Guessing enemy spawns are going to be more group based, so you need CC to break rooms, camps. Yeah, I mean, the the more that the more that Nick's been iterating on the Wormsbane um, content, for those of you that are new here, we've got a dungeon uh, called Tomb of the Last Wormsbane. We'll go, we'll take a look at it right now. How about that? Let me, 
Let me close this out and let me hop in game. Um, because some of you haven't been here in a while and some of you are new. We'll hit play, we'll go in. As part of hitting play, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the music. I'll turn the music up once we get into game. <clears throat> hey VGFX, what's going on? Uh, placeholder name Twilight Harbor before Night Harbor. Um, no, so Night Harbor is like the actual city. Um, Twilight. If it says the, so we've got Twilight Isles here. Um, and it was going to be Twilight Bay. So I'm not sure where you saw the Twilight Harbor, but you know what. Uh, it wouldn't shock me if, if we had something weird like that in there early on. All right, you can't hear the music because I got to get in game to actually adjust my sound settings. But Free Snake said Eminem will be the new WoW Classic, calling it. You know what? If we could be fractionally as successful as that, um, we'd be at a good starting point and we'd make lots of game for you forever. How about that? Um, but to your point, Toot Master, um, the, your question, yeah, as Nick's been iterating, uh, you can see that if you watch a couple of the VODs, recent VODs where there's playtesting, uh, watch Zukin's recent playtest VOD on our YouTube. Our YouTube can be found here, link in chat. Um, then you'll be able to see a uh, group play there. And yeah, there's definitely, there's CCing and um, breaking of camps and all the things that you would hope to, hope to experience. So here, let me go into my options. Oh, master volume. Cool. Um. So I've got, you know what? Let me camp out and log into the, the guy that I'm legitimately leveling right now. Um. We've got a, we've got a shortened camp time for testing. Uh. So it's easy to get in and out. Yeah, VGFX Vanguard was just it was it was a bit ahead of its time, a bit overly ambitious. Um and definitely some challenges on the execution front. So anyways, this is uh, this is my main. I'm going to go ahead and turn off aggro, but I'm not going to kill anything or cheat or in any way gain experience. If anything, this is just costing me some food and drink at the moment. Um, make myself invulnerable for now. So you can see here, we're in Shaded Dunes, um, the zone that I was just showing you. And... You can see the, the really beautiful lighting pass that uh, Pattis Harrison did here for Shade of Dune, or for uh, Night Harbor. It's starting to get there. I mean, there, there's still a, a fair number of like elements on the skyline that'll be added. Like you can see in Sage side here, kind of center left, the, the tower. Um, where the wizards and other folks are will will be filled in uh the the back area here this tiered area is going to have a, a slightly different profile more reminiscent of like the first one that we built a little bit flatter broader feeling there'll be elements popping up all over at some point you'll probably see the lighthouse doing lighthouse stuff in the distance but um yeah so for now this is a like a 
fun thing to run up to. Check out. Um, so we'll run... Oh, while we're, while we're doing this, those of you who haven't been here for a while, look at me. Let me equip my light source. Oh wait, my light source is burned out. We still gotta get... Is it? Yeah, it charges zero. I've got lantern fuel. On click, fuel lantern. Oh, I've never done this before. Sorry, Ollie, that I've never actually done this. Boom. So I just refilled my lantern using fuel. It does not seem to have used a charge of fuel, though. We'll see how that goes. Um, may or may not be a bug. You can see we've got, we've got headgear in now. We've got the lantern in my head, but hand, but no physics. So it's just, it's a bit stiff at the moment. Um, we've got some first, first iteration capes going on. If you've seen the newsletter, you'll see some of the different, uh, cape designs that are in there. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not wearing a robe or anything like that. So little, little mix ma mismatch, but I do like having that bit of a cow. Let's just pretend it's part of my cloak. Um, I think there's a, I think there's a bug with food and drink and bags. I still have so much food and drink compared to what I think I would have. What's up, Coding Caffeine? Adichie, doing well? How are you? Yeah, so this is pretty rad, right? Like, I love seeing the city out there. Um, we're put, we're, it's really going to be a very playable, adventurable city. So, um... For me, every time I look at it and just see it illuminated here and, and think about what could be in there, I get really excited. Would higher quality food help you meditate rest faster? We haven't discussed um, how we're going to approach additional benefits to food yet. Um, but I wouldn't be shocked if food provides benefits just because it's one of those tried and true things that's been done and makes sense and is good for the people that like to make food and stuff. VGFX, yeah, we've got we've got um, kind of the for proof of concept. It may actually wind up being like our our in dungeon, um, but we've got the fallen watch up there on the hill that gives you something to. You can see it from within the city, right? So it's always there, kind of calling out to you, like, "Hey, come explore me." Get, uh, get strong enough to make your way up up to there at some point. So, um... Toot Master, I'm just catching up to some of the earlier stuff. Uh, like the colors, even though it's simpler graphics, adds a ton of depth. Yeah, the... The approach for us really is, like, simpler old-school graphics. Um, I really... I'm just such a sucker for, like, the old blocky look. Uh, when I, when I play on P99 play with the old models but with shadows and then I just I like this style of oh hey hey get out of my face um I just really like this style um and then we're using uh HERP just kind of pushing lighting as far as we can doing things with lighting like having NPCs that are illuminated um spell effects have their own illumination Right, so let's see. I don't know if this one does. Yeah, it does. Oh, I like the physics on this, Luke. And if you're watching this later, this is a fun sort of coincidence. Watch them bounce down the side. If they lasted a little bit longer, that'd be even crazier. Um, <clears throat> run and jump off Dune to improve safe fall skill. Um. Can a spam cast? Not very well. Uh, 
Uh, it would be cool if you do more things while you're just resting, like crafting, repairing armor, make, making stuff. Um, so our newest, we've got two new team members, uh, Baloo and Luna. And uh, Luna has just written up a big thing on, on stuff to do while you're sitting around. All right, so those of you that are new here, the sun's about to come up. So we'll we'll keep an eye on that. You see it back there creeping. It's funny if you're coming straight straight at the city through the main gates, the sun's it, it comes up right behind the temple. It's a lot of fun. But it's also fun to see it see it from different angles. How do I feel about cranking up the fall damage, Keith asks. Is that rhetorical? How do you think I feel about cranking up the fall damage? Making the game more dangerous? I was, I've been very disappointed that uh, that when I fall off buildings and stuff in Night Harbor that I, I don't at least twist an ankle or pull a hammy. Crank up fall damage and also uh, have random effects table that you could potentially get hit with. <laughs> I can see that now. Temporary debuff. Pulled a hammy. Twisted ankle. I yoinked my groin. Oh man. I gotta, I gotta activate, uh, my dude who's supposed to be on the dock right now. Well, we see different time zones based off distance. Like, sun would rise now for this zone, but another 10 minutes for, at the other side of the continent. Adichie, that's a really interesting question. Um, it may not be that much work. That's one of those things where I could see, I could see Ollie or one of the guys, like, getting, getting a little weird and being like, figuring out the math on it yeah when we have a when we have a world big enough for that to happen don't let us forget to try that <laughs> make the game for an older audience half day debuff for sleeping the wrong way all the gray haired gamers out there hey mr decal hey i hope you're enjoying hawaii wasn't there just some rumblings like Volcanic activity kind of sketching people out there. Oh, for those of you that haven't been here in a while, let me see about summoning a minion. Oh, wow, that's interesting. That's an interesting bug. Because I've got invulnerability on... It won't allow, allow me to summon a pet? Yeah. Let's try this again without him on. Oh, there we go. And now we can turn him back on. <laughs> it turns off invulnerability immediately ganked by boat monster. Boat just pops up out of the water like Jaws. It's still got tiny bits of Nick hanging in his teeth. We should make it that so that if you're ever able to somehow cheat and kill a boat, it contains Nick's corpse. Hoping there will be an homage to the boat monster like a ghost boat similar to Final Fantasy VI Ghost Train Boss. Um, don't put it past us. 
So yeah, we haven't we haven't been in uh, Shade of Dunes in in quite some time. So it's kind of nice to run around here again, um, and we'll just be doing some minor minor tweaks, ongoing tweaks. Fisherman, we're gonna move you, buddy. We're gonna move you somewhere safer, I think. Um, are they going to add this treasure chest with teeth? in the future of this game. I can't remember what they're called. Mimics. Mimics. You know what? There's not, there's mimics that are not just treasure chests. There's furniture. Uh, somebody had mentioned when all the boat stuff was going on, a giant boat mimic. Are the mage pets that uh, Zukin and Goblin worked on in game? Yeah, they are. They are. I've just, I've only been playing a Necro. But they are. Oop. Yeah, Elementalist is the correct uh, nomenclature for the class, but I, I got what you meant. Group member mimics is terrifying. Doppelgangers, right? Um, rare spawn mud object. Could that be goodies or mimics? Um, spawning some sort of a mimic or whatever with, uh, with our current systems shouldn't be hard at all. Ali has put in so much functionality. If you've, if you've checked out the newsletter, then you've seen, um, you've seen we've got widgets in and... Uh, new static system, increased mud object functionality. I'm sure I'm forgetting something just off that one new systems list, though. Um, are the... This should contain some crocs. Some little dudes in here, maybe? There they are. Good, good. Good, good. Gotta get them a little swin swimming animation, too. Water is sketchy. Luna proposed a, a vision type that actually allows you to see further in water. That's pretty cool. It'd be fun to run into a door mimic that sucks you into a trap room. Yep, doable. How are the new animations coming along? Uh, good, good. Ollie's done a bunch of animation uh, system work and then uh, and we've been slowly just kind of getting things in um, that Urkin staff's been working on. Need to hit this lantern with the, uh, the cloth physics and make it waggle. So yeah, this new this newbie or this area here is pretty chill. We're gonna be updating um, population per the this work that's just been going on. Then later on, we'll be reworking the zone a fair bit. So let's go into Night Harbor. Hmm, Ali showed me, I gotta not forget, Ali showed me how to fix the trainers that I put in, and I need to, uh... I need to update them at some point. Um... <clears throat> Random pet spawn level is a bit of a pain. Wouldn't mind them being fixed level each cast so you don't have to sit there and recast uh, for a good pet. You know what? I completely understand what you're saying. Um, but also, it's weird because that's one of those ones where I'm like... Yeah. I get it. I get it. I don't know that a strong argument could be made to keep it, but it was... It was a kind of interesting lotto mechanic when you when you when you spawn one and then it's just like it's good straight away. It's such a wonderful feeling. T 
Soup Master, if you want to hear a little bit of discussion on the Enchanter, you should really check out Zukin's gameplay um, VOD. It's it's only a couple of videos back on our YouTube. It was pretty recent, and because they he plays he's a big Enchanter um, fan, and so he and Nick were talking a fair bit during that. You can check it out here. It's got like it's doing well. It's got like eight hundred views. Um, what are the major themes for Shade of Dunes? Um, so a lot of continuing like the regional undead storyline um as part of that you've got the ashira who aren't necessarily fans of the undead um and you'll learn more about them and there'll be more ashira there uh, to interact with it's all sort of moving you through to uh fallen pass which then takes you up to fallen watch um, a lot of just sort of your kind of common desert tropes um you know beyond just the the undead and there's some occultists that you'll run into out there and some researchers um uh, a lot of the other tropes in terms of like people have gone gotten lost and gone a bit gone a bit crazy in the desert um travelers lots of bugs and bats and snakes and shit because that's what we've got um you may run into a lich out there um He's involved in the storyline as well. Uh, yeah. Bandits and cultists and bugs. Oh my. Are you going to have teleporting? Yes, there'll be, there'll be classes that can provide you with, uh, with assistance on the teleport front. Um, we need to get the volume in here that, that shuts out the daylight. Um, this looks a lot doper when you come in and, and it's actually kind of cavey feeling, but at the moment you only see that when it's nighttime. Like, did I just die of rabies? Oh, I just feigned death on accident. I was like, what the... What did I just do to my... It just says you have died. Which... <laughs> I was like... Because I didn't realize I hit the 6 key or the 7 key. I was just like... I was going to type something in. And oh yeah, because 7 is my slash key on this keyboard. So I just... I was like... I was like, what the frick just happened to me? I just feigned death and uh, confused the shit out of myself. Well, that's embarrassing. Don't let the team see that. They're going to make fun of me. Actually, it's unavoidable. It's good. It's good for them to have, like, it's good for them to have additional things to make fun of. It's, it's called punching up, and apparently I'm taller than everybody on the team, so... Um, those of you that are new here, um, if you haven't checked out the website, check it out. Check out the FAQ. It doesn't cover everything. Um, but it does. It gets you in the ballpark. Check out the main page. You'll see a bit on our design philosophy. We're very group focused. We're very much into player interaction and player uh, interdependencies of different types. Um, so whether it be travel or trade or especially gameplay, there's going to be a fair bit of that. Um, those of you that are new, new here, um, been watching live streams. First time you've actually got to catch one live. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, I mean, you guys, I'm sure a lot of you kind of get the general gist, um, but what you're seeing is all work in progress. So if I'm having a bad frame rate day or something like that, that's just because some shit's going on or we need to optimize something. If you see a NPC moving around with no animations, it's because we didn't want to leave the capsule in and we swapped them for the new model, but they're not animated yet. There's not uh, there's not much in the way of smoke and mirrors. Um, what you see is what you get. Um, we're 
not at an alpha stage or anything like that where we're kind of like we're showing you this because we're we think we're ready to go and we we're trying to impress you and get you in here and get you cash and stuff like that nope we're just we're just doing it live oh you're clipping something thanks john that's beautiful i appreciate it keep thinking there's a watermark on screen it's just my name but what if it's both so i'm gonna keep running around the city it's a big one What's your stance on MPK? Should be allowed? Or do you plan on making monsters not aggro if someone else aggroed first? Um, the vast majority of uh, NPCs will basically operate off of um, credit is given to those who do the most damage. Nicodemus, thank you for your generosity. Three community gift subs. To your boy, Moises. C, uh, C Gabble. And Nazari, 01. Yeah, it is a it is a big city and growing. So train will aggro when heading back and um aggro camp on the way. Help me understand MPK. To me that sounds like more recent gamer terminology. I'm I'm old and outdated. Monster player kill. Oh, the way of griefing others. Yeah, we just, we'd always just call that training back when I was a kid. Yeah, you can train people. Uh, you can train people both intentionally and accidentally. And if you do it, um, if you do it intentionally, then eventually you'll be identified as someone that does that sort of thing intentionally. And then what we're going to do is we're, we're either going to banish you or ban you. Um, but we're also going to track how many times people complain that they're being trained and stuff like that. Cause I want to, I want to know not only like who are the people that are demonstrating maybe some bad behavior, but also who are the people that are always complaining about other people's behaviors. Always curious about that. Uh, Final Fantasy 11 didn't allow monsters to aggro and just head back passively, but you could still pull them from. Yeah, I don't. Uh, that just doesn't feel right to me. I mean, who knows where we'll land? But it just seems like if a monster's walking by you and sees you, then it sees you. Speaking of fall damage. <clears throat> So new area that's been added is uh, Concourse of Souls, which is, it contains Necromancer, Shadow Knight, guilds, and similarly themed stuff. Um, there'll be crypts with playable content and passage here takes you into the other newbie yard. You remember when Legacy of the Kesha released, there was a huge issue with people stealing names, so I would go and gate them and uh, the and the mob would summon their group one by one. 
trying to picture it. Um, on PvP servers and EQ is in, uh, valid to intentionally mess with others trying to camp for rare spawns. Um, it was it was valid depending on who the GM was. Uh, when I was GM on Talon Zek, it was definitely valid. Uh, people didn't necessarily like it very much, but... Um, and that led to the conversations about whether or not we should have a server like Sulan Zek. Hey, Kinster. So yeah, this place is this place is actually pretty big inside. Um, Brello Zek had a great GM back in the day. I think his name was Lindro. Uh, pretty sure Lindro was a keel. I, th I thought Lindro was a keel. If you haven't watched um my EverQuest history vods, um, check them out. There's about 60 hours, roughly 60 hours of um, interviews with EQ folks. And so look for Akil Hooper. That should have, that should be Lindro. He's very chill. We had a, we had a relatively chill team. Akil and Ryan and Paul and Big John Troy, Rich. I mean, we had a really rad team during all of that. Funny how many of those dudes I've worked with, super small industry. It is a very small industry. Still trying to get a public play test before the end of the year. Nicodemus, we're, we're hoping to get some people in and playing with us before end of the year. Ooh, a lantern is out of fuel. Does that then consume one of these charges? No. All right, so... I need to remember to write that down. Um, so we want to we want to get some friends and family in first and see how that goes, and then after that, um, after that, then we'll look at you know how we want to approach getting some people in. We're gonna keep it pretty limited though. Oh wait, I'm doing it backwards. Let me see to consume anything here. Nope. Okay. There should be a group hide ability for rogue or enchanter to stop uh, a train from wrecking you. Group hide's not a horrible idea. It's pretty powerful, though. The thing with that is you, you've thought of it for a specific use case, and now you've got to think of every single way that certain types of players, not mentioning any names of people on our team, would uh, would potentially abuse that unless it was super high level or something. Because I'm, I'm assuming that for it to be useful, you need it to be a pretty fast ability. Which, I, I'm going to tell you, I don't know. There may already be AAs and stuff like that in EQ that, or spells that provide that. Um, and I'm just uh, behind the curve or unaware or whatever. Yeah, I, I assume it would be break when moving. Short duration, long cooldown, break when moving does not seem bad. Mass Minor Illusion. Don't mind us, it's just a bunch of backpacks sitting here. Alright, let's hop back out of here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, no, I'm not gonna cheat. I'm gonna run my ass all the way back out. As you can tell, there's not like a, we haven't done a full lighting pass in here yet. What did Kinster say? Huh. 
trying to find the easiest way over over this into the harbor I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the Sun up just because so yeah it's funny all my slash commands are off the 7 key I don't know if that's normal on English keyboards but uh that is how I tricked myself into thinking I died of something. Womp womp. So our new environment artist. Mr. Baloo. Has been working in this area. We've got some interesting visual artifacts going on here that I'm wondering if it's a byproduct of how the the zones divided up right there. We're loading in uh, different sub scenes. So I notice there is some wackiness right here that we'll have to fix. I think Train's training is so relatively low that a special ability to negate it, like Group Hide, would have too far reaching power in other situations. I think that's a nice and fair sort of um, way of summarizing what I was trying to express concern wise earlier. Dry Docks, nice ad. I know. <clears throat> Simon added those in, and I was like, "What? What is that?" And then I got up close, and I was like, "Oh, cool. That's that's actually a really good idea. Good job, sir." This must be the area players make boats. Correct. I, I like what you're saying there, Keebs. It's very intentional and it is, I think it's very correct. Illusion boats. It'll make you look like a boat, but it's sure not going to help people ride you. That's where the boat mimics are born. <laughs> yeah, there, there'd be like a, a public service announcement. A warning up here. Caution. We've lost several... We've lost several several shipwrights in recent days to mimics. Bring, bring like a long stick. So this area is coming together. Yeah, I mean... Overall, overall, Night Harbor is going to be a pretty big place. So we've already started talking about kind of the philosophy that we want to pursue within the city to see if we can make it feel like a really nice adventure area. So the um, the example that I've used when talking with people that are familiar with EQ or P99 is um, imagine imagine that the city contains Kale, Sky Shrine, and Thurgoden. Um, and so that factional, that factional gameplay existed even within the city because there are multiple factions that we've already, um, started concepting, fleshing out that make up the leadership of the city. It's a big trade port. Um, and so you'll get to, you'll get to learn about the two primary factions and then, um, the other related factions. So. And you'll get to participate with them. Be a part of them. The other thing that we're going to be doing is... Uh, and I, I used this example when we were talking last night or night before. When we go in and start to populate uh, an area like this. So this is the, the Night Harbor Guard... Uh, naval yard right and so the the city guard which is semi-neutral um you'll you'll meet other military power, paramilitary militia factions that operate within here um but the night harbor guards naval yard here when we populate this uh, which we're going to do soon is kind of an experiment um we populate the naval yard and the garrison and things 
It's going to be populated with the expectation that one of these days when players are of a certain level, they're going to probably treat this like you would any other dungeon. So uh, in terms of spawns, rare spawns, itemization, um, factions, quests, is everything you see going to be climbable or would it be like mountain rangers have invisible mountain ranges have invisible walls no not everything's climbable um uh, uh, we would lose our mind trying to manage that um let's see thinking like D, &D examples water deep is supposed to be a huge it's large enough for an entire leg of a campaign to take place in Waterdeep, including combat with thugs, street gangs, etc. Any intention to have that kind of diversity within the cities? Um, would it be possible to start in Night Harbor and gain a few levels simply by running around town cleaning up street gangs? Kinster asked. Um, Kinster, that is very much the plan. Um, as a joke, we've already got a couple of guys in here that will aggro you. Um, but uh, you were writing that as I was mentioning uh, the population of the garrison. So I think what I was saying overlaps with what you're just asking. Um, but for example, there'll be, there'll be certain areas within the city that you immediately realize you're not welcome in. Um, but over time you may faction up with, uh, the right faction and, uh, find that you can go there, can access different content. And now you've maybe now you're not as welcome somewhere else. So, Oh, it's daytime, so they're not spawning. That's what it is. There are some, there are some thugs, some ruffians that uh, that will spawn there at night, if I'm not mistaken. Or I was in the wrong place. Could have been in the wrong place. Lucky honor. Thank you for the follow. But yeah, so uh, both on the like surface layer of the city, and then in some of the more porous areas, underground sewers. Um, things like that. So. When you fly, does your skeleton menu fly with you? He's just running um, around. He's just hanging out down there somewhere. We'll see how long it takes for him to catch up. Level 1 to 50 in Night Harbor alone. Um, it may not be impossible, John. May not be impossible. We're going to be hammering on. Um, we're going to be hammering on that in the coming month. Next couple of months. Let's see if the the pet finds me. Are you gonna have clickies? Yes. Rechargeable clickies, yep. Skeleton says cutting all guards his own. Um, trying to think what else is there. I, I pretty much showed everything now. So, for those of you guys that are new, um, may put this in here for now. I'll put my lantern in here since I didn't buy it. I'm trying to legit play this character. Cindercroft, thank you for your generosity. Five community gift subs. B Conkle, Supernatural, Hell's Ridge, Gwilathon, and Wind Bombs are all winners in the game of life. Cindercroft, you have a great day. Uh, Kinster, I don't have an answer for you on that one. Kinster's question was, if I remember correctly, bards could use clickies while moving because of the way that the class was coded. Any intent to make that a feature? 
no answer for you. I gotta fix these guys. I put them in. This guy works now. Let me sell him some stuff, as a matter of fact. Um, should buy those. Good. Some jackal meat. Nice. Uh, bat wings. Bat eye? Hmm. I wonder what he makes with that. Uh, bone chips bread. Okay. I just got a shitload of bone chips. Um, but I gotta fix these guys. Ollie showed me how to fix them. Um, Toot Master said, I was watching live stream from a few days ago where you were showing off torches you placed on walls that didn't have any lighting like other torches have. Yeah, it uh, sounds like Nick put, um, put some of them in Wormsbane as well. I don't remember seeing them in the playtest, but it sounds like he did. Um, but I can show you the example one. Oh, yay, my rabies finally disappeared. Um, so I need to fix those guys. All of the, um, all of the trainers. I forgot one step in adding them, so they don't work at the moment. So I just gotta, I gotta fix that. Um, have you thought any more about the ideas from last week regarding helping players to find where to sell items? Uh, so far it's basically just, the thought is to continue with the implementation of um, the point of interest system that we have where you can ask NPCs generic questions like where do I find such and such. Um, potentially get the feedback when they don't want something. Um, the um, more I think about it, the idea that you guys suggested with regards to um, when you when you bring somebody up seeing whether or not like a little indicator like a green dot or something that means they'll buy it uh i don't know that's horrible we'll we'll see on that um and then um for the most part i mean we had a long discussion with it with the team on it um and i think we ended at a spot where people were okay leaving it as is for now i mean because i basically what I indicated is uh, for everything that's currently dropping in game, air quotes around everything, I'm sure there's cases where it doesn't work, but like my current path is if I want to sell while I'm playing, there's the, the bartender and the cooking guy that buy all of my critter bits and meat and stuff. There's the shifty gnome right up here where my cursor is that'll buy a lot of other stuff, but he'll rip you off. Um, there, if you want to sell reagents like bat wings and things like bone chips, um, there are reagent vendors along here by the hospice. Um, after I get done with shifty, I just run over here to where my cursor is the tannery. They buy all the pelts and shit that I have. Um, and then I, if I got anything else left like cloth or rusties or something that I want to sell and I don't want to get ripped off by shifty, then I just go into the market and it's just, it's basically right there, two buildings. Um, anything beyond that, bows, shields, um, there's a garrison, uh, there's a garrison quartermaster right here that'll buy them, and then all the, like, bows and fletching and stuff is right here. So, I mean, that's basically, that's basically my route if I need to sell stuff. Um, and so I think once once you learn it, there's that kind of sense of mastery of like, oh, I know where to go to do this, um, which is basically the exact same thing you would be doing if you needed to learn where to buy shit, right? So it's no different than learning to buy shit. It's just that, uh, right? Because you, you need to go to specific NPCs to buy stuff. But it's also that way for selling stuff, so... And then if you are buying stuff, if I'm like, oh, I know that the quartermaster sells shields and stuff, you never, you know, when you go there, you may be surprised to find that somebody sold something cool. Um, and it's, it's, it takes a, you know, it makes it a bit less random on sort of vendor diving. So that, that was the thoughts at, by the end of the discussion, I, uh, 
I felt like people were kind of cool with it. Um, and we'll see. Um, we'll see. Uh, will there be a buyback tab in case I accidentally sell something I didn't mean to? Um, I think that's the kind of quality of life feature that's not really, that's not bad. Goblin Works said, God, this game looks fucking insane compared to this time last year. <laughs> exactly. But just think, like this time last year, a lot of you guys had only been on the team for a couple months. Look at all the work y'all did. Um, all right, so let's make it nighttime. Sorry, Nick, if I'm uh, nighting you out real quick. Oops. Uh, time set uh, 6 p.m. And then I'll summon a torch. I'm going to move my Fain Death key so that... No, I'll leave it. I'll leave it there. That was actually very funny. Oh, there was... Was it a rant? You didn't interrupt anything. Goblin. All right, so... Ollie's added a, a new system. If you're reading the... Um, if you're reading the update, uh, we've got a volume system that allows us to basically put invisible volumes in the world. Um, that like, sorry, I just started reading it. That, that allows us as game designers to create different effects and have different things happen. We can even put a volume in a world that keeps you from sort of walking into a space. We're, we're likely going to be using that type of stuff in player housing and, and things. Um, but the, the other system we put in were these things called statics, which basically back in the day we put in the, we put in doors, um, so that you could use keys, etc. And then Ali expanded basically what was a door system to also be over here. We've got an elevator. So these objects are placed in the world by design, just in the database. And they've got a bunch of, you know, we can trigger all sorts of things off of this. Like I can make this, when I go up or down in the escalator, I could have it spawn things, produce game effects, tell the world to be in a certain state, whatever. Um, so figured that out. And then if you notice, we walked through this door during the day and it was open um, and it was not clickable. Um, and that's defined on this door in data, just like being able to click the door. And this message that pops up is defined in data. And it's the exact same system. Um, and it's the same here with, I can use uh, the lever of dampness here to make it rain. It is the, uh, stoic, calm down. That's too far, maybe too far. Okay. And so anyway, and then we've also got these guys here. So we, um, we've got areas in the dungeon that are super dark. It was so good. I can't recommend, uh, enough that you guys go back and watch the play test with Zukin and Nick and Pattis and, uh, Baloo. And I think Gary popped in there. Um, there is one point where the, where their torches ran out because torches in um in lanterns as you saw earlier they've got a finite like life cycle on them and so as a player if i'm in a dungeon and there's no lighting and uh you know i want to be a good citizen or i want to help my group or whatever but there are torch holders or other similar things, right? Just take this same concept and extrapolate out into interesting ideas. It could be a, you know, a little area where you can sit like a, uh, you know, a, a magical glowing orb or summon something or whatever. So anyway, I put this here, it removes it from my inventory. I no longer own that torch, but it lights up the world. Um, do I have a lantern equipped? Um, I currently have a fire beetle eye equipped. I put the lantern in the bank, um, because I just didn't, I didn't earn it. So I didn't want to use it too much. Um, 
So yeah, we can players can interact with the world like this in this manner. So another doesn't doesn't seem to torch as bright as other torches on the wall. Um, that makes sense because these are probably lit in a slightly different area. But just consider that a tuning thing, or maybe we'll justify it by saying that you've got a little little weak ass player torch as opposed to these mighty guard torches. Um. Does the fire beetle all I have charges? At the moment, I don't think it diminishes in capacity, but it will fade. Um, guards have their own torches as well, yeah. They, they're they illuminated. Fair point. The goblin, were you talking about the torch thing? Stealing all the torches from the city will be Night Harbor for real. I don't know if you can steal them yet. Um, we'll talk about stealing things later. But we have been talking about... Uh, what that what that might be or how that might work so so i just showed you the ability to interact with the world by like placing an object in a specific holder um another thing that we'll see in shaded dunes is um there'll be burned out campfires in specific areas where you can then build a fire and that will have special sort of properties so that's another thing we'll see in the next uh zone um wouldn't mind seeing empty sconces all over the place. Cozy for dungeons. Uh, Big Al, good point. Um, bring your own oil, bring some magic stuff, whatever. Um, so that's one type of interaction where I'm just, I'm placing an object in a very specific place. Then the other thing that we do is text-based interaction. So if I look here, um, I see it, it tells me when I hit the look key, um, it says, you see a well, it appears to be as old as the ruined walls nearby. Um, so now I can start interacting with it through a series of slash commands. So inspect well. Um, you notice some moss growing on the rim of the well. Dark water shimmers in the moonlight just below the well's rim. And so, oh, I need to, I need to get this set up. I'll have to get Nick to help me make a new ability. Um, but so... Can I inspect the water? I actually don't remember. Uh, I see nothing out of the ore. Can I smell the water? The water has a pleasant fragrance. I can taste the water. You scoop up a handful of water and taste it. It's delicious. Um, and so the way that this well works at night, let's see, um, time set, 6 a.m. Well, during the day, if I look at the well, inspect the well, the well is so filled with water that it's within reach, but it, notice it doesn't mention anything uh, about the the moss growing on the rim of the well. So, if I go back to nighttime, inspect well. Okay, there's moss there. And I honestly don't remember what I used here, but Take moss. You scrape some of the moss from the rim of the well. And now I have this item. Um, so I've got this Moondu moss. Does it have to respawn for others to do that? No. It doesn't. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll do things like make sure that there's either lore or no drop or you need to have a specific item in order. So we've got another one of these where it's, uh, you've got to have like a parchment and charcoal to be able to rub across these ruins to be able to get all of the engravings onto the paper, uh, so that you can collect that for a quest. Um, so it just checks and makes sure that you either are holding an item that's necessary or have it in your inventory, etc. Um, but yeah, so the, you also organize your moss by taste. Yep. Um, let's go back to 
and so basically, um, you know, the little story that's being told here with this, if you haven't figured it out, is based on the name of the moss and the fact that it only comes at night. Um, but it also changes, you know, the effect that happens here with water and stuff. So other things that we want to be able to do eventually is like if you've got an empty canteen, maybe you can fill up one charge of water. Um, yeah, so this these are our mud objects. The thing that I showed you with the torch earlier, it's burned out now, but um, that's our static system. Um, we have a, a widget system, um, which is the ability for players to spawn objects in the world that have most of these same properties on them. So, yeah, we've got some pretty powerful tools and they're all very sort of simply data-driven at the moment. Um, so it gives us a lot of... Uh, a lot of simple but uh, powerful, uh, simple, it's a simple tool set, but pretty powerful functionality, I, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, what is this music? This music is part of our original soundtrack. If you go to here, let me. I'll give you the link for this song specifically. It's a 22 minute um, like ambient track that we've just added. So when a zone, outdoor zones music's done playing, it switches into this. Um, but you can, you can listen to all of our music on a playlist on our YouTube. Let's check out Nick. What's he rocking? Oh, he's wearing the lantern on his waist. He's got He's got hoods and all sorts of hair conflict going on, but it's it's all good. Oh, I'm bald. That's why I have no problems with my hood. Um, Nyx added some really fun, like, armor and armor quests into Wormsbane. And so... I think that last playtest, you guys did spend some time like camping rares there to to start getting some of that. So, and we worked on their appearances. Um, cool. We worked on their appearances the other day. Backpacks are so cool. Awesome. I'm glad you like it. That was one of those things we talked about early on, wanting to get in. Um, and people were kind of not sure, but I. I think it, you know, people have kind of gotten the adventure look. You can see, uh, you can see the belt pouches and stuff that I'm wearing. Oh, we have belts now. Oh, I should make belts now. Shit. Let me write that down. Now that we have belts in, I should probably add belt to the visuals or add visuals to the belt. Belt. And also fix, uh, trainers. Okay. Uh, backpacks are realistic. Should be an option to hide it. Yep. We're going to put in options for <coughs> backpacks, capes, uh, helms. There's been debate in the community on this one since we first started talking about it, but we're, we're just going to put the options in. We're going to put the options in. If you don't like it, you don't have to like everything. You like how the beetles have illumination? Yeah, we uh, we started with the illumination thing even back when they were when they were just wee capsules, and now we've got now we got a couple different couple different beetle glowy beetles in there. Expect more glowy stuff. Lighting is cool. So we're going to go in here. I think John optimized a lighting issue that we were having. We're having some frame rate hits due to uh, like something. Oh, that wasn't what was expected. Um, something that was going on with the light in here, but it seems like it's fixed. Yep, 
I'm good. I had to summon summon a friend. Yep, it looks like that giant frame rate hit is gone now. Um What the hell was that cleric trying to stun? attack buddy come on buddy um Sorry, I was just really busy thinking. It's not my strong suit. So I was like, oh shit, we're playing now. I actually got to pay attention. And it's it's amazing how quickly I get engrossed in the game. Like I'll look over. Uh, I should probably kill the cleric, huh? Or at least get him healing himself. Um, anyways, yeah, I, I got engrossed in the game. This, this game is very engrossing. Apologies for completely stopping streaming. I looked over and started reading what you're saying, which is silent to myself, kind of going, all right, they're saying stuff. What do we got here? Well, tunic. I need to find some pants, dog. No, feet, feet, feet. Um, oh, these are also the newbie trousers. And I lost a bracer somewhere, so... Um, anyways, have you guys figured out sub fee for this game yet? Um, like how far I was about to ask if players can first hit 30 days three, like some MMOs do. Um, so some MMOs make you buy a box and then you get 30 days free. Um, we probably not going to make you buy a box, but you'll just have to pay for your first, I mean, your subs, your sub, um, you pay for the first month and then you get to play. Um, we're looking at something like 10 or 15 bucks. Uh, the thought was that we would want to do a little bit lower subscription price if we could potentially have an option where you could maybe tip us or something. Like you could pay 10 bucks and anything on top of that. But um, we'll, we'll never allow you to pay for any sort of in-game, um, any, any in-game benefit, whether that be... Holy sh... Oh, these guys are lower level though, right? So... Um, no in-game benefits, no in-game acknowledgement, nothing like that. It's just... If you want to be cool in-game, play the game. Um, but if you want to tip us, then cool. Does that make sense? Um... We need an enchanter. Yeah. One of these days. I wonder if they can uh, make the skeleton eyes stop glowing after they die. Yeah, that was a question that came up. I'm not, I'm not quite sure how we could do that easily, but it's been on our mind as well. Are starting towns going to be neutral or is this going to be factions? There'll be factions. Um, our giant city of Night Harbor for proof of concept is going to be a, a kind of a mix. What about skeleton eye glow by mob type? Um, I, there's some different eye glowing going on in here if you look. This is looking like a ghost generator from Gauntlet right now.
Uh, there was some research done about 10 years ago that showed no demos actually increase sales, obviously, but I think it's also part that people are more willing to take time um, to uh, get to like what they pay for. Yeah. It's been a while since I read it, but um, there's the book free. Um, what's his face? Uh, I think I thought it was a Mark Andreessen book. Oh, sorry, I didn't let you. I didn't let you do your job, Nick. I just got weird with it. Um. <clears throat> Will you ever do free to uh, till level three or something? Um, so the, the the problem with, I think the problem with like a velvet rope approach for our market, um, where it's like, hey, it's free until you hit X points or you hit X level or whatever, um, is that it will primarily be used by griefers to do griefy shit, as opposed to actually help people like, um, make a decision as to whether or not they like the game. Uh, the sort of play for a while and see if you like the game approach works well for uh, certain kid stuff. Um, and, oh cool. And also for like games where, oh, don't have enough mana. Um, games where you're you're appealing to a very broad or a big audience and they're really honestly not sure if this is a game for them. Um, yeah, so what we're doing is we're providing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of content related to the game. Um, as uh, it looks like, who was just saying that? Um, yeah, BDC Retro. Uh, the issue with submodel is it deters people from jumping into the game to mess around for a day. Have you thought about... Uh, yeah, so honestly, I think uh, Sheer, uh, BDC's response is, I think that's the appropriate one. We're making a very niche game for a very specific, like, target audience with um, a lot, a lot, a lot of information about the development of the game, the workings of the game, the team. All of it's there. So if people want to research us, um, rather than give them a, a free day to play or um, a free, you know, week or whatever, I say they can get on YouTube and, and, uh, on our Discord and spend that day learning all about the game. Um, and, you know, it's likely that we'll have had plenty of folks that had come in and played the game for free. Prior to that, we're not doing any NDAs in any play tests we do. There's no reason for an NDA for a play test if we're showing you everything we're doing in real time and you've been looking at this since it was a tiny blender file with some capsules running around and shit. So it would make no sense for us to try to do anything weird like that. So there's there will be plenty of information about this game. And if, if people are still unsure as to whether or not they like it, then just you're gonna have to take the risk, especially if it's a ten dollar sub. If if you're not willing to to given everything that's available for you to sort of research us in the game, if you're not willing to like plop down ten bucks for a potential's month worth of experience, then I don't know what to tell you. Go go play Candy Crush or some shit. It's free. 
You can you could almost get a subway sandwich for ten bucks, yo. And then, you know, later on, later on where we've exhausted all of our sort of core, core target, you know, uh, core sort of target market. And we start doing a thing where it's like, oh, we need to get more and more people in. Then, then we can talk about that type of thing if we ever get to that point. Oh, cannot wait till we get uh, the ability to set up our hotkeys. That's gonna, that's coming soon. That's gonna be awesome. Nick, Nick, you've animation desyncing still on my side. <clears throat> in your best old man voice. I remember back in the day when it was just called capsules and conceptions. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, capsules, I miss you. And blows you away that WoW, etc. have now up their subscription prices. Yeah, I don't it, it was weird because when I when I first joined Varent, I could have sworn the game was still like only what was it? It was something ridiculous. I thought it was... I thought it was... Um, less than 989 originally. And then it got bumped up to 989. Or am I wrong on that? So anyways, it went from like one price to another price. And then up to whatever it was, like 14... 14, yeah, so 15 bucks or whatever. Um, and uh, everybody is super kind of worried behind the scenes, you know, on the team and stuff. It's like, oh man, is everybody going to quit? Um, and nobody quit. It was a rad, unique experience. Nobody quit. My. My, my thought is if if when we're ready to start taking your money, if you honestly don't feel like this is easily worth your 10 bucks a month um, or whatever you end up giving us, um, then either we've failed or maybe you're not really our target market, target consumer. Ishwitari, hello, V Gates. I bet it changed from, oh my god, will people quit to, oh my god, we should have raised, uh, should we have raised it more real damn quick? Belfaster, probably not far off. Um, Bottle Poppin said, have you ever played Final Fantasy XI? Had some interesting old school, uh, MMO design ideas. I did. I played for a, a I played for a fair, or I played a fair bit, but my retention of a lot of that stuff has been complete shit. Fortunately, um, people on the team, um, played it and remember it. Um, especially our... One of our latest team additions, Luna, um, has played it a fair bit, and she's been referencing it in some of the stuff she's been writing up. So, take Nick to a vet. He's scooting way too much. Oh no, poor Nick butt. Yeah, Nicodemus, she's a cool kid.
How many people are working on a project right now? Uh, 14. Seven blind mice. See how they run. Hey, Ollie. It's funny. I was like, it's I, Ollie's now at month twenty-seven on a subscription, and it's funny. Like, uh, I, anytime somebody from the team resubscribes, I'm kind of like, oh, why do they? Uh, they don't need to do that. But then I was watching Zookin stream the other day, and a commercial popped up, and I hit that Prime button so fast. Uh, to all of you that are not subscribers, I am so sorry that you have to watch the commercials. I, it bugged the complete shit out of me. I immediately had to, like, subscribe. So the, the fact that so many of you are here and living, powering through the commercials, I really appreciate it. It's very cool of you. <clears throat> And they don't play commercials in Bahrain for some reason? Oh, interesting. They they play like three in a row here in Germany. And it's all these like normal companies. It's like the grocery store has got gamer com commercials or the bank has got like, uh, you know, gamer type commercials. It's like... Banu has hunger from extreme gaming. Gay Sureva, yeah. It's just like, what? Um, it's weird. Some streams I get th three commercials, other I get zero. Uh, oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't know how they're... I'm sure they're running all sorts of A-B tests and shit in the background. So... Um... Subnatural said, we get to see real-time dev already extracted more value uh, than games I've crowdfunded. You know what? Thank you very much. That's a very cool thing for you to say. Um, I, I, you know, I'm biased because I'm part of the team, but like, I honestly think the... the stuff that we put up, if you haven't, if you haven't been there, check out our YouTube. We've got... Environment art being built in real time, character art, concepting, um, a couple of odds of some programming. Um, in a, in a few years, when Ollie's kids are are full grown, he'll be able to he'll be able to stream. Um, until <laughs> until then, not so much. Um, we'll have to get we'll have to get Nick streaming again. Um, but I mean, we provide as much insight as we possibly can without like turning it into some sort of a weird game show or whatever um but we try to provide as much insight as we can answer your questions as honestly as we can etc and to us it just feels like we're trying to provide you as much value as possible in advance so that you know when it comes time for you to play um, you have a better understanding of maybe why something is working, isn't working, the way it's working. Uh, when will it actually be able to fix a thing that maybe isn't working? You give us a little bit of benefit of the doubt. Um, we give you we give you free content for now, and you give us uh, maybe goodwill. Tell your friends about. Um, community's grown pretty good. Um, we've got. I just sent out the um, the update uh, to the mailing list, and that's like almost 2200 people now it's like 2190 or something um that are on the mailing list but you know keep it in mind um 2000 is awesome but before we get to a point where we can realistically start asking for money and shit um we need to get the game playable and we need to we need to have a you know a little bit bigger community um so keep letting people know everybody that's like hey how can i support this just if you like it tell people about it yeah comments comments and likes and stuff on the videos are huge for us um, people are discovering us a lot of folks are discovering us through either my EQ history videos or um, through just naturally through like YouTube Eminem stuff um, 
we have i think we have fewer than 2000 subscribers on on uh the m&m youtube those are rookie numbers we need to get that up we got more than 2000 people in our discord we've got almost 2000 people on the mailing list um issue with Vielen Dank für deine, uh, what's, how do you say gift sub in German? Anyway, thank you for your generosity, Dargeth, enjoy. Big Al, thank you for the prime. Um, Bottle Poppin said, Sorry if this has been discussed somewhere, but I always found the idea of pre nerf versions of some items staying in the game and EverQuest extremely cool. I basically won the lottery when I ended up with a pre nerf. Uh, is that Circlet of Shadows? I forget what. Oh, damn. I just got nuked for no reason. POS. Oh, not for no reason. Spawn. I was like, Where did that come from? What is COS? Is this Circular Shadows? Okay, cool. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, so, yep, yep. Um, yeah, so we we like that kind of thing. Um, all right, we're moving on. Well, we got a pop. Oh, he just ate my minion. Um, so we, we like that thing. Uh, more popping. Oh shit, let me get a... When your game's so hard you can't talk to Chain anymore. It's, it does keep us honest, right? Like, um, watch that video with uh, Zuka and Nick and company. And keep in mind, this is a low level dungeon. I'm level, I'm level four right now. Nick is level six, right? So our low level dungeon feels like a regular dungeon, which is our goal. The game should feel like the game from the beginning. Yeah, so, um, our YouTube channel's here, if you guys aren't familiar with it. Um. Where is that cleric? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, he's back here eating my pet. I'm not really observant. Kill shot. Boom. All right. My dog is making noise. Do the walls prevent care class? Uh, so basically, was there LOS on that heel? Um, I, for some reason, I would assume no. But I could be wrong on that. It's a it's a question for us to figure out and ask Nick. Let me ask real quick. I, I don't think I can make my pet sit. Um.
Let me make sure I'm not missing something uh, crazy. Yeah, so there was there was line of sight on heels. Sorry, I'm I I'm just honestly very focused at the moment. I wish I could do more than two things at once, but uh this frickin' pal then. Uh, Zuko was saying he doesn't like the sheen on clothing. Is it an issue with reflectiveness? Um, it's probably something to do with the shader. So we'll have to look at it. Um, anybody playing anything similar to Eminem while waiting on test phases? Um... Dargus mentions Embers of Drift. Definitely check that out. I did not have time this weekend to uh, try again to to purchase it. So uh, there's no magic in that one. Rev said, "Yeah, it's um, it sounds like they're going like very low fantasy with magic slowly being introduced to the world as they go, as the game progresses." Oh, okay, so you have played at T-Con. Fair enough. Um, I, P99. If everybody could just keep begging for a new P99 green server to be brought up, that'd be real cool. Yeah, Stoic, don't don't rant. Don't rant. Don't need to rant about other games in here. That was my pet's fault, Nick. After all that work, that was my pet's fault. That wasn't me. I blame I blame our current pet functionality. Come on, minion, hang in there. All right. Uh, 
Oh, okay. Oh, right. That was close. I almost got my just desserts for training us. Do undead mobs social aggro? They do. Getting. All right. So those of you that are not on the mailing list, join the mailing list. Um, you will not get. You will not get the current update because um, it's already been sent out. Um, you won't get it sent to you. But if you go to our website, uh, check updates. Our update section. It's really worth going and looking at all the older updates, um, just because. There are videos, screenshots, um, there's just a, a lot of stuff to look at or read about in each one of the updates that's not necessarily collected in one spot, which may be a mistake. We may need to just pull all of that into a massive collection, um, but it's a huge amount of info, so. Ah, crap. Not going to be greedy. Probably racing the clock here. Oof. I may have to gate out of here. Later. Um, you answer a lot of questions on stream. Maybe you should make a compilation of questions answered. So Keith has been doing a fantastic job of turning those into small videos. Oh shit. Oh god, don't die, Nick. Okay. All right. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. <clears throat> um, so, and then I, I update the FAQ periodically, um, to try to hit some of the more common questions as well. So to your point. Oops. What is that crack? Uh, oh shit. If that was worth actual crack staff money, I wouldn't have been getting rid of it, but they're a little they're, we've cheaped out a little bit on these. It's not one it's not one plat issue Atari. We haven't made that adjustment at this point. Um I would feel bad asking a question you've answered several times, but you're excited to play the game. Um I'll be one hundred percent blunt with you. Me answering the same question uh, repeatedly is, is is essentially how I'm able to fill three hours worth of streaming. Um, so, and it actually helps me over time um, actually know some of the answers because there's a lot of stuff that you that you guys ask. And I'm like, I'm not 100% sure. Let me ask somebody on the team, or I'll say something and they'll be like, that's not how that works, dude. And then uh, and then I know. So. The deacon is coming. Okay. Ah, I got his attention. I got his attention. 
That probably wasn't the move. Oh, you son of a bitch. He's gating. Don't you dare gate on us. Whoa. Revisiting something can inspire you as well. Yeah. Um, hopefully I get better and better answers every time. Uh, Nicodemus, Thursday unless something weird pops up. I'll see you then. Always good to see you, sir. By the way, I've been meaning to check on you. Hopefully everything is uh, still going well on your end. Dude, that guy pounded me. Thank you very much. Um... Let me see, do I have the opportunity to do some satchel organization? I got a ton of stuff to sell. Oh, bit. Okay. Uh, Tikan asked earlier this just made me think of Tarkov um the um question Tikhan asked was Robot, would you say that Tarkov made you feel the same danger you felt in EQ? Yeah, exactly. That's what that's what got me back into playing EQ in 2020. I was playing Tarkov and was like, oh, I wonder how EQ's doing. Um, and started watching some people stream EQ more regularly. Pet attack. There you go, buddy. Um, I'm not really using my other spells. I don't know if it's because I'm scared, if I'm worried about... Oops, I did not mean to, uh, hit that one, I don't think. Uh, you know who I'm super impressed by? Curtis girl. She never played EQ or PC games till 2020 and now she has like seven classes maxed out and epic. I didn't realize that about her. I've, I've watched her stream, uh, rated her a few times when we were, um, when we were streaming like P99 and stuff. That's extremely cool to hear. Oh. Having to actually care about getting aggro in games makes you think more carefully about the environment leading to the actual dungeon crawl, unlike games like Final Fantasy XIV, where mobs just run away uh, after you run a direction for five seconds. Yeah, there's a lot of... There are a lot of uh, little... There are a lot of little elements um, that add up to just a it's a different type of experience. Uh, I'm trying this one as well. Oh, he gated. Nice. That's the first NPC I've had gate on me since uh, the functionality was added, fixed.
Okay. What's he got on him? Anything? Chips and cloth. Chips and cloth. Um. I just get away from these two jerks who came into my little block of the dungeon. What should I do, guys? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the whole concept of how these games work, it, it can be a little sad, I guess. Show up in people's houses and roll them for their loot. Um, Big Al said the vibe lighting is what it's all about right here. Yeah. Huge, huge fan of like over the top colorful lighting and atmosphere. How many monitors do I use? Um, two. Like one and a half, really, because I need to, I occasionally have some issues with my video card, but I use two. My, my setup is not quite as pro as some people on the team. So I'm looking at you on a monitor here and I'm playing on this monitor here. Uh, did you make this game? Um, this is our game. It, it, we're a team now of about 14 people. Um, our website is here. You can, we've got a team page, an FAQ page, and if you scroll through our updates, we just added a big update today. Update 25 covers September and October's progress. Um, but if you go through all the various updates, you can see a lot of different uh, um, different screenshots and videos and stuff. Ollie's going to put in playable monsters without telling you and you'll only find out when 30 mobs converge on you in a dungeon on stream. That would be a fun surprise. So we've been working on the game for just over two years. The first year it was a four person team. Um, and we mainly, um, we did a lot of, uh, building of placeholder art or like creating placeholder art just so we'd have enough art to play test, um, focused on world building design and, uh, core functionality. And then going into year two. Going into year two, we added more art uh, capability or added art capability on the team. We had been paying uh, contractors, like we were just commissioning art initially to start exploring the art style. Uh, but then we added Zukin and Pattis and Goblin and things got popping. Um, we also added two more people on the tech side. That was like September of 2021. Um, and oops. That was the wrong button. Um, September of 2021, and then things really started uh, moving fast. So that's when Gary and John joined. Um, and then since then, we've moved up. We've got four people on the tech side. Um, we've got, what, four people on the art side now? Because uh, Blue falls into that. I don't think I'm missing anybody. Um, Animation is part of art, so it'd be five, but we've got an animator on the team as well, Arkin staff. Um, the music you're listening to is from Robert. Um, and, the, and the cool thing is the the team is composed of MMO folk. Um, right, so we can, we can usually find pretty common points of reference. Um, you know, uh, people on the team either have a shitload of experience playing like EQ and other MMOs or um, if not EQ experience and definitely like 
WoW Classic Era and up. So it's, it's made it easy for us to communicate and, and move pretty quickly. So. What type of game do you think a single person can make? Um, I think a, a single person these days can make almost any type of game if it's scoped down enough, which I think most people just assume MMO uh, preclude, you know, it's precluded there because of scale, which um, But, I mean, if you're realistic with your scope, you can make all sorts of different things. Um, especially given the how good the tool sets are. The tools have gotten really good. Um, the availability of different assets that if, if you're a single, just a single person um, that you can use or purchase. Uh, depending on what your skill set is, I mean, if you're primarily, if you're primarily code, um, one sec, um, then naturally you may have to have more reliance on external artists and design, um, but that's not necessarily the case. I think it really depends on who the single person is. Theorex, thank you for the follow. Avenroot, I don't know if I thanked you for the follow, but thank you again if I didn't. And apologies if I didn't. Um, is soloing a viable option in this game? It's a slow option, but it's it's viable. But it's slow. I mean, the, the goal is for you to group with other people, so we're not going to necessarily um, go out of your way to explicitly force that, um, but we, we're going to encourage it so it's not going to be as optimal as being in a group like this usually i can figure out what people's um what people's names mean and just say that but i feel like i'm going to get it wrong so you have to tell me red raw power thanks lou thank you lou diamonds um Um, there's a MMO out on Steam that was made by two people. My name is Redra. Redra, say it with a Russian accent. Um, I would, I would say that I don't know that I can do a Russian accent. Name is Redra. My dog's Russian. That was Transylvania. Is that not in Russia? Um, oh, hey. My dog is a Russian. Um, Goblin said, Keech just brought up the idea of getting our very own game cover art for Eminem Twitch stream YouTube. Thoughts? Um, any idea what the cover art would look like? Um, sounds cool. Um, Alvia said, I feel like it should be something with Night Harbor, maybe a cover like the old Shadowrun cover, something that conveys the sense of many classes we need in a sense of world of Eminem. I mean, you basically... You've been killing it with all of the 3P images, so I just would maybe... Uh, but we've also got to think about the actual size of those things and what can be conveyed in that amount of space. I don't know. I've got the feeling it'll be something uh, we're discussing in Slack 
out. I'll take a look when I'm done with the stream. And done cooking dinner. He got whacked. Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, T-Con. Luna was just uh, recommending that because we were looking at some of the crazy things that happen with their god system. It's not just about choosing, like, not just a 3P, but the 3P. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be our forever, ever, ever, we can never change a cover, right? So don't, don't, don't overstress it. Just make something badass. What's he got? Uh, rusty scimitar. Thank you, Tikan. Holy crap, the monthly update post that just went up is huge. Sounds awesome. It is a big one, Lou Diamonds. So it's twice <laughs> it's uh so nick had originally wrote up the one for september and then we just we didn't put it up i mean it was a weird month um i was gone camping for a few weeks a lot going on so we just we held on to it and so then we had this entirely new massive list of stuff that got done for october um and it took me it took me a couple hours to basically like try to integrate those things in there in a way that maybe just wasn't random but it was so much fun like seeing all of that stuff in there it also it's indicative there's a ton of uh there's a ton of content and stuff that we can start making now Justin asks, will I be able to craft M&Ms in Monsters and Memories? No. No. I, I just because I don't know that we'll ever M&Ms are kind of they, they are tasty though. But I don't know. It seems like they'd be a difficult company to work with. Whoever owns them. Like Mars or whatever that owns them. I don't think I'm a fan of breaking the fourth wall. I neither am I, Tikan. I'm I'm being silly right now. I'm being silly. Where are you going, Deacon? I don't think so. Why can I not find some damn boots? Why is it so hard to find some boots? I have been barefooted for five levels. Think you guys are nailing the spell graphics? These are the alpha ones. Thanks, Tikan. Zukin's been getting on it. I love the spell sounds as well. Robert's done a fantastic job. Steuben says builds calluses on the souls. Yeah, that was what my mom always told me. I used to, I was one of those kids that anytime we were living in Florida, it was like dirt road, bare feet. Are the spell gems going to be color coded to match their target type? Uh, we discussed that a while back. We haven't discussed it recently. Uh, I'm 
Wouldn't be shocked if we've got some sort of an intelligible scheme like that. But yeah, seriously, I haven't had anything to foot slot. I accidentally got rid of a bracer that I wasn't supposed to get rid of. So now I'm down one bracer. My inventory is filling up. Noxious Deluge got him. Guys, I found this cool bracer someone sold on the vendor. Only three copper. Um, I think it to buy it back was going to be a fair bit more than that, or I would have just done it, I think. Are you guys going uh, doing a static paper doll in the inventory or animated? Um, we were just looking at having that be... Uh, Basically, it's just a camera showing your character, so 3D. Um, but we haven't we haven't iterated on the UI since in any real like depth since we first put it in. Oh shit, Nick! Uh, do you think we have him? I don't think we have him. Oh, maybe we do. Jeez. Who's whacking him? We got him. Was that you, Nick? What were you hitting him with? Holy shit. I thought I was gonna try to feign on that one. I was like, I was trying to get out of the way so I could, uh... My pet was hitting him that hard? That's incredible. I don't know why I was doubting my pet so much. Alvius is 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 I'm not I'm not picking on you when I say this, but the way you're just describing it, it's like I could just picture hands waving. You're like, okay, okay, here's my idea, goblin. And then you you immediately like screen it in like a director. You're like Sexy ogre monk girl. Sexy ogre monk girl. Some other winners from the survey. Fighting on a dune with scorpions and all manners of sand bandies surrounding them as they fight. Now get this. This is the best part. Night harbor in the background. Eh? But the first thing is sexy ogre monk girl. <laughs> I immediately picture you with director hands. Picture it. <clears throat> I've got newfound respect for my, my pet. Guys, guys, listen. Guys, listen. I've got it. Sexy ogre monk girl. Don't don't bury the lead. Nice zombie collection you have there. Yes, thank you. Okay, Nick round kicked his face off is what happened. N Nick round kicked Skeletal Paladin for 12 points of damage. 
I heard it popping. <laughs> three words. Guys, three words. Sexy. Ogre. Monk. It's the new thing. It's the new thing. High elves are so 20 years ago. High elves done to death. You said you were designing the game for a very specific audience. Sexy ogre monk. I could I could almost even see you doing like Instagram fingers with the fingernails. Sexy ogre monk fam. It's a strong female ogre monk and she's sexy fam. There better be a t-shirt. You guys are going to have to remind us of all these t-shirts that we need to make. We're going to do it, though. <laughs> Laugh as off my cheeks hurt. <laughs> you did it. You triggered this moment in time, Alvius. Sexy troll shaman girl jealous here. First expansion, guys. Our ogre females will crush your head like a watermelon goblin says. I don't know if we're actually allowed to in invoke that imagery. Now you're going too far, goblin. Nobody look at chat. Death by Snoo Snoo. I think that's what he was implying. I don't know the rules anymore. It's 2020. It's almost 2023. I don't even know if we're allowed to joke about that anymore. It, everybody thought it was funny in 2006. Today. Horrific. Oh, pet, attack. Do something. That's my fault. <laughs> I'm not commenting on... We're... 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 We're, we're moving. We're moving. We're moving away from this topic. We're moving. What's going to be worth more? This rusty weapon? Alright, I'm going to do this right here. I'm going to destroy that. We're just going to pretend like... Dude. I'm almost overweight. An agnostic necromancer? No such thing. Oh uh, yeah, actually, there can be, t -Con. I hate to break it to you. In our world... In our world, you can be agnostic and a necromancer. You can also be agnostic and a cleric, which I think is even more controversial. Believes only in his own power. Well, I mean, necromancy, it's almost like an agnostic necromancer would be like an early, you know, it's like whatever, 18th century, um... Oh shit. Oh shit, the big guy's up. Oh my gosh. Med quicker, Sean. Tim and Bell is up. Tim and Bell is up. Uh, a necromancer who hates blood and gore? Goblin, what is going on with you today? You're being pretty frisky. Did you actually get enough sleep or something? I cannot even picture you saying some of these words with your gentle mannerisms. <clears throat> Will there be seasons in game like winter, spring, summer, etc.? Araxan, it's been on our list of like really would like to have. Really, really, really want to uh, be able to support that. Um, but. First things first, let's have a, uh, let's have a, uh, a, a, let's just have a season. Let's get the art built for one season and then we'll see, um, how we could potentially cycle that and, um, update as we go and stuff. The necromancer having powers and being an agnostic would simply imply that the powers of life and death don't necessarily come from one God or one specific God. Mordain, nicely put. Bentali, hello. 
certain zones like night harbor wouldn't see a ton of difference um probably some just weather differences and stuff <clears throat> yeah what am i i i'm just now looking down there he's he is smacking pretty good Oof. So notice Nick's even considering things like whether or not we're going to get repomp on us. So I could have sworn we wiped on this guy before the two of us. Noxious Deluge. Come on, Timon. Come on, Timon. Be cautious. Let him burn his man out. You son of a bitch, where are you going? You. He's trying to get us trained. Come on, pet. Big damage numbers from your pet. Um, the last time we were in here, I, I didn't have my. Oh, where's my where's my auto attack? I'm I'm ruining it for us. Um, I think I had my level one pet last time we we're in here. And he's got no more mana. Let's burn this bastard down. Don't run from me, Timon. Wh holy sh! Oh shit! That son of a bitch used the escape hatch. Yeah, rip loot indeed. I was so amped to uh, get that fat loot. No loot for you. <laughs> um. Oh, he got him. <laughs> what? Did you, did you kill him and just go to? Did you cheat or did you actually find a way to? Yeah, you, you did a go to, didn't you? Clear, clearly that's my loot. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Where did it, where did it go? Did it go in the pouch? I'm so amped. I got some thick loot. <clears throat> Wowzers. <coughs> this cape looks so good and does so much for the animations, even with all the clipping. I agree, Goblin. I, I like it a lot. Um, I'm excited to get the other cape uh, textures in that you did. What up, Team Vosh? More, mi more MMOs indeed. What do you think about sneaking and crawling mechanics for secret areas passages? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, we've got with, you saw like between the widgets, the volumes, the statics, the mud objects and other stuff that we're going to be doing in the environment. Once we get all that linked into it. Nice level five. Um, I was talking over the wonderful level up sound. Um, yeah, definitely see a number of uh, things like that. Um, VGFX said, who do I send my portfolio uh, to to help on this? Um, just hit me up in Discord. Shoot me a DM. We had an open environment position, um, but we have filled it. Welcome to the team, Baloo. Our dear friend Simon. Um, 
but you never know what we, what we will be looking for in the future. I am so full of loot right now. All right, we are at 439 right now on my clock. Gives us a bit more time to play. I think we're waiting to see if we can get another rare pop. Those of you that are just coming in, you don't know what we're working on. It It is Monsters and Memories. Check out our website here. We just released a really big update detailing, um, detailing what we've done over the last two months. Usually we do a monthly update. Uh, this one just happens to be two months because we didn't release um, the monthly update last month. Um, Damn, Skeletal Minion was not playing around with the zombie. Um, so, check it out. Um, if you're new, check out all the updates because you'll see a ton of screenshots and drawings and uh, concepts and stuff that we don't necessarily... Is there still an open position li list on Discord? I thought I closed that. Let me, let me go there and... Uh, let me go there and stop tricking you. That's not very cool. Huh. You're right. It is still there. That is my bad. For some reason, I thought I, uh... Okay. Should be... Should be fixed now. Sorry about that. That explains... You guys are super cool inquiring on that stuff. Um, I definitely appreciate it. I was... I was wondering where the confusion was, and it's clearly on my end. Um. <clears throat> uh, I didn't realize Germany daylight savings times happen already. Threw me off. The U.S. has two more weeks. Oh shit! What time is it there? Am I? So I'm an hour ahead. Or an hour late. Oof. I started at 9 Eastern, usually 8. Okay, so that explains why you guys like hopped in here super fast. Ouch. Got brutalized. Um, Yeah, because when I started this morning, it was everybody kind of poured in immediately and kind of threw me, but it was exciting. Can't sub with Prime. Anyone else notice this issue? I've heard of that issue back in the day, but... Um... Zarendal, thank you very much for the follow. Um, again, those of you that aren't familiar with us, here's our Discord. Uh, we've got a ton of these videos. Um, some are more development focused. Uh, some are just kind of showing you around the game, and then some are us playtesting like today. Um, but you can find them all on our YouTube. We are building this in Unity. So we've been working on it for... We've been working on it for just over two years. Um, the first year it was just four of us. We're up to 14 people now. Um, Vintali, thank you so much. Um, Vosh, the, we started with, uh, I think we started with ML API, um, like Unity server and stuff, and then uh, ML API. Then Ali refactored a few times, and uh, we eventually went to Lightnet Lib, um, and everything's, the solution's extremely specific um, to our needs. Because, well, I think what we found, and I'm not, I'm not the person doing the uh, actual, Coding, um, 
Ali heads up that side, and we've got four people on the tech side, uh, so three others with Ali. Um, Ali answers a ton of questions in Discord if um, if I screw anything up or you want to know more. Um, he's very responsive there. Um, but the... <clears throat> the thing... Oh, sorry. No worries, Stoic. It's rad that you're here no matter what. Thank you for 11 months. Um, yeah, so he just went with a much more streamlined solution after looking at, looking at the amount of, I guess, like overhead and some of the other issues that we were seeing when we uh, were using uh, ML API and whatever else he was using originally. So I think we're in our third refactor there, um, but it's been extremely performant and he's been trying to beat it up uh, like basically from day one to ensure that uh, things are good. We've got a video in one of our updates and I believe I can find it or someone could find it for you in Discord. Um, but we've got a video where it shows basically Nick and Ali or Ali via Nick pull the entire zone. Um, and it's like every mob in a zone running around and you can see it's it's pretty performant then and then he used that to actually fix a few things and make it even better. Um, Posh said, I'm just curious. My wife and I are building an MMO and we started with Unity. Uh, we tried Mirror and it was very lacking. Uh, we switched to Fishnet, which was a lot better, but still found it lacking. Now we switched to Unreal and it's been absolutely amazing. Oh, nice. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what kind of time you have or interest or whatever, but um, I'm, I'm so not the person to talk to about that. But if you wanted to chat on that topic, um, Ali is, he's an amazingly nice guy and uh, very open with, I mean, I, um, you know, apologies. I'm not familiar with, with you guys. I'll have to look you up afterwards. I've got you up on another tab, I believe now. Um, but the, uh, yeah, there's Ali right there. You're, you are amazingly nice. You're one of the nicest dudes ever, dude. Um, but I mean, I'm assuming if you guys are, you're verified, I'm assuming you stream your development and we're doing the same thing. So it's, it's funny, like, um, oh, gated. It's funny when people ask if we have an NDA or whatever, it's like, no, we're on here blabbing all the time. We love to talk about this stuff uh, because, damn son, um, what we found is by being open with our development, um, we've been able to. Here's our Eminem Discord. The one that the one that you just brought up is the uh, like the stream Discord. Um, slightly different. So if you look in there, you'll find our. What in the heck? Um. But we found that by being open with our community and with everything that we're doing, we've gotten so much like either good information or clues for things we're having problems with or whatever. Two different discords. Yeah. I mean, the stream started out as just me streaming. Oh shit. Um, and so that was where the original discord came from. So the just discord discord is just for my stream from back in the day. I've never changed it. And then the Eminem Discord is for the project. It's usually not too confusing because usually people don't use the Discord command. It's just me spamming it in here. Oh. Based on the number of people in our Discord, I think people have been able to find it. I just, I'm, I'm full, I am full up on gear. Good thing it's almost time to gate out of here and sell. We're just waiting on one more potential pop of the rare. So yeah, this play session has been really smooth. Uh, the only technical problems that I ran in that were into that were obvious is like zoning in. I crashed back to character select for whatever reason. And then, um, when the rare got low health. He discovered a secret passage that 
we were not aware of. I'll take a look, John. Thank you. Those of you that are not familiar with me, um, I've spent the last bit of time working on MMOs. I joined the game industry in 2000, worked at Variant slash Sony Online for a while, have been making MMOs ever since. Um, I was about to say, I've been making MMOs for a living and now I'm just making MMOs. And all of this like project started just because we were talking about, we were playing uh, EQ on an, a TLP and then playing some P99 and just talking about what we liked about the older style of gameplay and then the community had a lot of good opinions and feedback and over time it just kind of quickly became, hey, let's see if we can use um, learnings from the last 20 years plus a established engine and a team of people pulled from like the emulator and other communities to see if we can knock out a smaller scale niche game and we've been working on it for just over two years now. When can you show me how to play my game? Uh, Brex asked. Um, hello, well, just kidding, but no. But no, really. Yeah, I think you mean really, really. Whoop. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Go. Oh, good. Cool. Did a ground spawn? Uh, is that a ground spawn or did it drop something? I think he just dropped something. We've got ground spawns though. Um. Yeah, Dark Tail. It, it. I mean, it really has been two years. So. But the last year, it's really it's added up pretty quickly. Good to see you too, Brex. Appreciate that. Grumpy says, remember grouping with you in Soul B, my paladin Shore says hello. Yeah, it's it's crazy. You have not really had time to get in and play like any any more like P99 or TLP at all. Um and these days if 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 we've got extra time or if I've got extra time, I kind of just want to come in and level here. Um What's your first major boss going to be? Like the scale of a giant or dragon? Yes. There, there are times when Nick is moving around when it looks like Ollie, it looks like, I don't know what the, the term is, but the... What is like the long headdress with the sort of the ring that you guys rock over in your region? What would you say are the key design philosophies for Eminem that differ from original EverQuest? Um, I think for us it's less, I was asking about the headgear. Like, sometimes when I look at Nick with his hair popping through here, it looks like he's rocking one of those long sort of white headdress thingies with the the thing that holds it on top of your head. What is the term for that? 
Um, the duh, 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 what was just saying? Um, it's less about differentiation. It's more about trying to get at the sort of the reason why they were there in the first place, um, and see if we can take certain things deeper. Right? It's like there there is a lot of really cool functionality. Um, simple functionality, but cool functionality and like basic content in for things like um, faction and faction changes, religion. There he is. Named. Nice. Okay. I'm going to probably finish answering that in a second. Which side did he pull him to? Over here. All right. Pet attack. Noxious Deluge. Um, I don't know that it's Turban. Yeah, it's that Lawrence of Lawrence of Shaded Dunes look. Uh, different things based on what country you ask. Well, what about Bahrain? Uh, you call it, uh, Quitra? Quitra? My pronunciation is going to be horrible. Uh, Quitra. Quitra. Nice. Okay. No chance to run this time. What does he have on him? Crack staff, holy water. Words of the Crusader Priest. Oh. So I, I'm assuming that's his common drop then. Um. Cool. That was great timing on that pop too. Um. So to answer your question... Uh, essentially, it's it's really more trying to explore some of the either implied functionality or explore the original intent of design choices and functionality that was uh, in like original EQ and uh, um, you know Dark Ages and UO um, and and pick the elements that we think make a nice sort of modern representation of that era and not just one single game. Um, a lot of us are more familiar with EQ, um, but it's, you know, we're not pulling from any one game. Um, I may or may not be saying that because of legal reasons. I don't know if that'll even help. Um, but basically, uh, if you look at EverQuest, EverQuest was designed as like a graphical version of DQ mud, um, MUDs that were out there at the time and it and inspired by you know playing tabletop and what we're trying to do is with things like our object interaction being all text-based it's really got a mud feel that's why we call them mud objects but it allows us to have a lot more um like interactive fidelity without necessarily art fidelity or animation fidelity or whatever um and we want to lean into things that you started to see in later expansions where you had factional gameplay where you could go with one faction and it really changes the game relative um, to if you'd gone with the other faction. So go deep in faction, go deep in religion, basically make religion feel a lot more faction, uh, faction-y. Um, go, go much broader and eclectic and deeper with trade skill ideas. Um, lean more into scheduled behavior. So... Um, you know, a lot of changes, even now I, I show the example, if you go back and watch the early part of this, uh, VOD when it's posted, um, I show you where we're doing a text-based interaction with a well, and depending on if it's night or day, it's going to provide different types of, um, interactions there. Um, so yeah, seasonality, uh, is something I was asked about earlier, um, if we could, if we can, that'll be great. Otherwise, we're currently, you know, basing changes in zone population and um, and things that you can interact with based off of uh, time of day, 
uh, we'll get lunar cycle in as well, uh, different triggered events and stuff. So, yeah, it's again, it's not about trying to be widely different. It's more about just trying to take things that we liked and go much deeper with them. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. Uh, is server population in relation to content going to be a factor? Um, i.e. limiting the server pop size. Um, we're going to get a feel for that as we go. But we are sharded, right? We're going to have multiple servers, so... <clears throat> Can mud systems interact with stats and skills for ability checks? Yeah, they already do. Um, so they're the way they're set up. Um, I'm going to wrap up here in a second, but uh, I was going to show you, I can show more on, um, on Thursday, but basically the way that they're set up is they can do a skill check already. Um, and then with volumes, we can force, force the interaction. And by force, it just means exposing it without you having to do anything manually. Um, so make it automatic based off a of skill as well. So like if you've got perception or if you've got a certain trade skill, like, um, Where's my minion? Oh, I think I bugged it by feigning with uh with the minion up. I think my minion bugged out, Ollie. Oh, you repopped, but the, I got I got tricked because when you repopped, I looked and my minion was still up here. But I guess I don't know that I saw him after the repop. Because I expected them to, to be gone after the repop, but okay, fair point. Um, I need to I need to gate out of here, Nick. I'm assuming you're fine getting out on your own, being you. Yeah, that's what I thought. Let me get gate up and get back to town. Mordain said MMOs have lost that special sauce of social interaction between the people behind the avatars. Yeah, and I you know, we're we're firm believers that we can we can promote a lot of that interaction again um, with the decisions that we've been making. Nick reminds me of that one really quiet guy in your guild that almost never dies. I think that's fair. Are there going to be instance mini dungeons? Nope. Uh, we're not doing any instance things. Mordain said earlier in response, very cool. Original EQ is still probably my favorite MMO of all time. So many of its design philosophies are wonderful in my book. Right on. Nick is definitely anything but quiet, but he's amazing at all games. Yes, you guys, you, he, he's quiet in here. Um, he is not quiet in Slack. Will there be any dungeon content that's intended to be crawled rather than camped, if not, even if not instanced? Um, there's, we'll have to see. I don't, I don't want to say never, um, because I, there are plenty of ways to sort of promote flow through a dungeon. Um, but camping, we're leaning heavily into camping. Um, they're talking about, uh, Nick only shouts. That's not true. 
Well, I thought I was zoning. Let me... Let me see. Am I actually loading or not? What's my scene view? Oh, no. What's going on, Unreal? Uh, let me kill it and then... Hop back in and see if I arrived home. Um, Ollie said no instant housing. If you buy a house, you got to buy it in physical space. And when we get housing. Did I say Unreal? I didn't say Unreal this time. You're lying on me, Ollie. I did not. You guys are making up stories. I never make that mistake. I, I, I don't even know what you're talking about. It's the same to me. I don't care. I, it's, I don't, I don't see editor. When I look at editor, I don't see editor. Fail to load Freeport using Unreal. <laughs> now you're, now you're saying, mm. now you're just saying, yeah. Yeah, it is all just abstractions, man. I don't, I don't subscribe to your belief systems about the differentiation between editors, man. I know, I know, Dargas. That's cool. Thank you, Phil. What's up, dude? Like all consoles are a Nintendo. Exactly, man. Like all sodas, sodas are a Coke. I'm, I'm going to get a Coke. What kind of Coke? Mountain Dew. Ali, I think my game's broken. All facial tissues are Kleenex. What do you think about using AI to save you work from textures? We're only going to do that when we have pulled enough art out of Goblin and Zukin to be able to train the you, the AI to replicate their style accurately. So we've got to do that as quickly as possible. Don't let them know. Check the console. It doesn't, it doesn't show me anything that Who says I'm not already training my own AI? Who says that you're not an AI? I've only seen you once. Oh shit, you know what it is? I think it I hit level five. My free trial is over. Mm. Did you turn it off and on again? I I just I'm doing it again, Ollie. Oh, exit completely out of Unreal? I can't I exit Unreal, buddy. <clears throat> it takes too long for Unreal to load up. Oh, no, I did exit. I didn't camp. <laughs> Let 
If you exit on real, our game is going to fail. Uh, U N I T Y. Every person I talk to in tech support say that over 70% of the fixes include things a person said they already tried. That makes sense. Do I need to, do I need to fetch something? Nope. I've got all the latest. If I was playing a dwarf, this probably wouldn't have happened. It's, man, yeah, it's fair. If I was playing a dwarf, I'd probably be 100% be less animated. You know what's happening? Unity does not... Uh, Unity is kind of like your wife. It doesn't want to be called by another person's... Another editor's name. I was just, I was just kidding, Unity. I was just kidding. Unreal means nothing to me. Th that was years ago. That was years ago. That was three, that was like when 3.0 was just, it was just first a thing. It wasn't, no, it wasn't that good. No, I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. I mean, Kismet and Matinee were kind of new. I'd never played with them before, and, you know, it's pretty awesome, but by the time the project really got going, like, they didn't even really work anymore. That was, God, when was that? That was, that was over in 2011. What netcode library? Lightnet lib. You want a refund? <laughs> Don't we all? Bark and Ozdemir? Thank you for the follow. I think I think what's going on is that the uh that the editor is telling me that it's after five. Um and I need to start dinner now. So that may be that. May be that. If you're looking for a lot more action, um, yeah, Jasmine is done with me streaming. She she pushed this hidden kill switch. Ali sees the error. Is it the uh, static lighting sky component issue? I honestly. I'm assuming I was uh, gating back to Night Harbor. Um, <clears throat> it was just a fling with that sexy ogre monk. Big Al, I saw that you're up in my my DMs. I I haven't opened them yet, but I saw that there's there's at least forty messages, and I'm gonna catch up with uh, that right after. Toot Master. Thank you for being here, everybody. I'm gonna wrap up. Um, I'm gonna go start dinner in a few. No, no worries. I'm just busting. Just, just busting your um chop. Um, here's our website. If you just stumbled in here and don't know what we're doing, here's our Discord for you to ask all sorts of wonderful technical questions of Ali, or uh, you know, the rest of the team, not me. Um, here's our mailing list. Uh, BDC Retro. Thank you for being here. Um. Chinny D, always good to see you. John, thanks a ton. Uh, MMO Pug, you take care as well. Thank you for being here. I will be back on Thursday, uh, roughly the same time, unless you guys have day night saving times actually synchronized with us. Then it will be my normal time, but an hour earlier than it was for you today. Dargos, Chus, 
Vintali, yep, Thursday. Hells Ridge. All right, looking forward to it. I will see you on Thursday. Alvius. Always cook with love. See you later. Rev, thank you. Dark inside, see you. Ishi Watari. Chus. Bis Donnerstag. Big out later. Well below average. Goodbye. Phil. Yeah, tune in earlier next time, buddy. Though I know it's really early where you're at. <laughs> Ollie said our log file is 28 gig. No wonder I can't find the error. Uh oh. Um, cool. All right, everybody. I will see you on Thursday. Uh, assuming Ollie's able to work through 28 gigabytes worth of errors. What did he do? Oh no. What did he do? Gary. <laughs> Zerendal, tschüss, vielen Dank. Mordain, you have a good one as well. Oh, poor Gary. Ollie broke the internet. Uh, Team Nova says, I'll take things and never do again for 2000. Mm. Beer chug. See you. All right, guys. Um, I'm going for real now. Thanks again for being here. Uh, cool to see so many new faces how quickly do vods go up uh miss the beginning of the stream you can watch it on twitch immediately and then um it'll be up on youtube sometimes this week so bye bye team people i will be in uh slack as soon as i get done here and then after dinner so bye y'all Am I going to raid an EverQuest streamer? No, because I didn't think about it earlier. But that may be a good idea for next time. Okay, I'll see everybody. Bye-bye.